Okay, so the crosshair rate impact is now gone as I sent it back to the original owner. So huge thanks once again to Solitan over at IO Tech for lending me that particular motherboard with the 5600X CPU, although it took much longer than I expected to get those parts tested. And now, thanks for sending me the B550 Unify X motherboard from MSI to test. So uh, I actually still have the same 5600X CPU uh, that I used uh, in that video where I overclocked it on the crosshair rate impact. So we could actually uh, compare these two motherboards against each other uh, when it comes to overclocking. Although it's not very uh, reliable to compare the vCore requirements per given clock between uh, two different motherboards because the way the vCore is measured can vary hugely between uh, two different motherboard models. So the most reliable way to compare the CPU overclocking capabilities between two different motherboards is just to check the maximum frequency it can achieve. Like, uh, is the maximum speed 50 megahertz, 100 megahertz, or 200 megahertz higher on some other motherboard model compared to some other one? So the same. And actually, there's another 5600X CPU uh, that came in the socket of this motherboard. So now I have two different 5600X CPU models. So if we are lucky, the second one could be much better. So let's hope for it and let's see. So uh, I thought that on this video we could quickly check out the motherboard, like do a short unboxing and overview of the board. And then on the second video, we can actually do some actual overclocking using this board. So uh, just going through this whole board briefly, uh, third gen AMD Ryzen desktop ready. So it doesn't support the uh, Ryzen 5 3400G or the uh, Ryzen 3 3200G. So uh, apparently, and based on some comments some of you left on my uh, previous video about AMD overclocking, B550 chipset should be better for memory overclocking compared to the highest end X570. There are some uh, downsides to this chipset of course, like for example, most of the B550 motherboards, they do not support SLI at all. There are a few models that do have SLI support. I think the P550 Strix E and the Strix XE, those boards should be able to support SLI. But most of the boards, and including this one sadly, this one doesn't support SLI at all. So we only have one full X, X16 slot on the top, and then we have another, let's call it a physical X16, X16 slot at the bottom, but it's only wired for X4 through the chipset. So the saying. So that's a huge downside of this board because SLI support is actually quite handy to have on, on a high-end motherboard that's aimed for overclocking use as well. Like if I wanted to do some, let's say, uh, two card legacy testing with, let's say, with two 7970s, two uh, GDX 780s, 780Ti's, GDX 680s, 580s, uh, I cannot do that on this motherboard, sadly. So that's a downside, if you ask me. The highlight is definitely on the memory overclocking and the B550 Unify X was the uh, most interesting AM4 motherboard for the latest Ryzen CPUs when I just went through the available options briefly because this is a full ATX motherboard with only uh, one memory slot per channel. So yeah, so if we go or if we look at the back side of the board, we actually have all of the rear I.O. things mentioned on the package already. So that's quite handy if you ask me. Then uh, aluminum cover with extended heatsink. Uh, so 4x double side M.2 shield. So uh, maybe this board has four M.2 uh, ports and heatsink plate for each one could be. Additional MOSFET base plate. Is that on the back side? Not sure. 2.5G LAN with uh, Wi Fi 6 network solution. So, yeah, maximum onboard 4X M.2 slot. So, that's definitely plenty, if you ask me. Lightning PCI Express Gen 4 support, although Gen 4 doesn't really matter or it doesn't really give you that much benefits at the time of making this video, but it could change soon, of course. Dedicated for Extreme OC, I guess so. And for overclocking, if you are interested in the VRM specs of this board, definitely check out the uh, VRM and PCP analysis made by BuildSoil. I already checked it before 
they have before filming this video and it's definitely uh, worth it to watch. So uh, no one is better at doing VRM analysis compared to build so, so definitely check out his video about this board. But yeah, so direct 14 plus 2 power, power design with 90 amp power stages. So that's definitely huge VRM solution for a board like this. And server grade with uh, 2 ohms uh, copper PCB, core boost with uh, premium layout design, 6 layer PCB. So yeah, so let's get this whole thing opened up. So let's zoom you out and let's see what actually comes with the board. So I guess we have, not sure if we have to go through all of the accessories, there should be some antennas for the Wi-Fi and so on. So let's just get the board out straight away. We can already see the CPU over there. So, actually where, what are these? Are these some standoffs for, oh, those are actually stands for the motherboard. So you can actually, uh, they provide you with some uh, simple uh, test bench solution. So quite handy. So uh, I guess that's quite a nice plus from MSI for this board. But yeah, let's put the motherboard over. Let's take it out. So the additional uh, MOSFET heatsink is on the back side of the board. Oh, so the uh, memory slots, they are not SMD. But yeah, so uh, that's how the motherboard looks like in relatively close view. So you can see, so these should be the M.2 uh, uh, ports, I believe. The longest one should be over here. And I think that's an M.2 port as well. Yeah, it should be. And uh, we only have two X16 slots and the bottom one is X4, so no SLI, sadly. And the good thing about the memory slots on this board is that they aren't too close to the CPU socket. So uh, that's actually an issue with many of the uh, single slot per channel motherboards on the AM4 socket that we cannot use the, uh, let's say, the T-Rex container from Kimping Cooling, the latest one, very efficiently. So uh, when it's uh, very close to the CPU, it's very hard, or when the slots are very close to the CPU, it's very hard to mount the CPU port properly because the T-Rex is a huge container. So uh, when they are this far from the socket, the uh, T-Rex container should fit very, very nicely. So yeah, so we have, we have dual 8-pin for the CPU, although as Buildzoid already said on his, on his video, Dual 8-pin isn't really required unless you run a heavily overclocked 5950X 16-core CPU. So uh, with these uh, lower core count CPUs, you can only distribute the load on the power supply a little bit better when we have dual 8-pin. But dual 8-pin is not like absolutely required for most of the cases. So we have debug LED and plenty of uh, fan connectors all over the board. What's not sure what that is. J Corsair. Is that probably Corsair Link? Not sure. I would guess so. Then we're only six SATA ports. I think these aren't supporting. I'm not actually sure. Can you? Uh, I think you can't even run Windows XP on AMD. That's how I think. So we don't have any uh, separate ports with XP compatibility with XP compatibility. I, I'm pretty sure you cannot run Windows XP or Server 2003 on uh, the AMD Ryzen platform or that's how I believe. Then uh, when looking at the Southbridge area or the chipset area of the board, we have some weird features on this board. So this this uh, little uh, switch over here is actually uh, LED on off switch. So when you turn the switch, it will disable the LED lights of the power and reset buttons. So that's absolutely useless if you ask me. And then I was actually looking at these two chips over here, but they are not BIOS chips. So sadly, this motherboard only has just a single BIOS chip. So that's actually a minus on a motherboard that costs over 300 euros here in Finland. So if we had 
two or more BAUS chips present on this motherboard, we could easily avoid the problems that I faced with the P5E3 Premium. So if the main BAUS gets corrupted, we could easily use the backup BAUS to recover the main BAUS. And now we cannot do that on this motherboard. So if the only BAUS gets corrupted, we can only uh, try to recover it using the BAUS flashback feature at the rear I.O. And if that doesn't work, then we have to use those external flashing tools to flash the corrupted BAUS. So it's a saying. Then uh, one, one funny thing about this board is this little uh, additional 6-pin power connector for the, uh, chip, uh, for the PCI Express slots. As you cannot run two-way SLI on this board, it's absolutely useless. And when it's this close, the second slot over here, you cannot pretty much plug this in if you have a graphics card over here, because any like air cooling heatsink design on the on, on a graphics card, on a full-length graphics card, that's at, le that's at least let's say uh, uh, two slots wide, will prevent or will hit the PCI Express uh, power cables that would connect to this uh, port over here. So just that's a really weird design option if you ask me. So that's absolutely unnecessary. It should be somewhere around over here or at, or turned, just turned 90 degrees. Yeah, we have separated audio part on the motherboard. So uh, separated from the rest of the board I mean. And let's check the uh, rear I.O. very briefly. So even the MSI boards, they do have BAUS flashback nowadays. Not sure how long they've had those, but yeah, so we have clear CMOS button, then we have, uh, well, technically the BAUS flashback button over here, and this is the uh, dedicated USB port for flashing the BAUS. So you can flash the BAUS without uh, anything, or without the motherboard running. So if you upgrade to a newer CPU, and it obviously requires a BAUS, uh, a BAUS update, then you can use this board with this function over here to flash the BAUS. Or if your BAUS gets corrupted, you can attempt to recover the BAUS by doing the BAUS flashback procedure over here. Then we have five more or five more USB ports. Then we have, this is probably, a, this could be a third gen or a third party USB uh, type A port over here with the type C uh, under it. We have PS2 combo ports. So this actually supports both mouse and keyboard, even though it's not uh, marked with colors as a combo board, you can see as the rear I.O. plate is already integrated in the motherboard heating design, we can see a mark for both mouse and for a keyboard. One HDMI for iGPU, Wi-Fi antennas over here, one gigabit Ethernet and 7.1 audio ports over there with SPDIF connection. So I guess that's pretty much it. In my kind of views, there's no need to cover multiple things, but those are the main specs. So we should have the best possible memory overclocking when it comes to the AM4 socket. We have nice compatibility for different coolers as the memory slots aren't too close to the CPU, but we don't have SLI support. So I cannot use this board to run, let's say, uh, two GDX 680s or 780 Ti's for uh, older tests like 3D Mark Fire Strike, Fire Strike Extreme and so on. So that's the biggest downside because I was actually looking at AM4 motherboards not that long ago, like which one would I get myself? As I would like to run, let's say, older 3D benchmarks with a 5950X CPU, for example, and I cannot do that with this board, so that's a little bit sad. And the uh, Chipset area isn't that important as we cannot run, or we, I'm pretty sure we cannot run Windows XP or Server 2003 on the AMD Ryzen platform, so we don't have any separate storage port options that could support those older uh, operating systems. So oh, that's how I feel. So yeah, so let me know what you think about this board. I, if you just do, like, let's say, uh, one graphics card with and you want the best possible CPU and memory overclock, then I guess this board should be one of the best options on the market. Buildsoid already did many uh, memory overclocking demonstration videos using this board, and I think he got up to 5500 on the memory with the crucial ballistics, or even as high as 6000 megahertz on the memory. So that's absolutely insane figures 
far beyond what I could reach on the Crosshair 8 Impact. So uh, I would definitely choose this motherboard over the uh, Impact if, uh, if you wanted to hear my honest opinion. So uh, there's, no, uh, th there's no need to even consider the Impact of this unless you want a very small form factor. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. So that's the end of the unboxing and quick overview of the uh, of the uh, B550 Unify X. On the accessories, the most interesting part is definitely the uh, test bench option that you get with the board. So uh, I will not remove it from the original uh, packaging, but you can use these as a test bench and you can even put a fan under the uh, motherboard. But as I already have test, bench, test benches of my own, I don't really have any use for that. So that's pretty much the end. So, uh, so stay tuned for the actual overclocking part using this motherboard and let's see how high we can actually push these two different CPUs and both the dual rank and the single rank Samsung B-Dive based GDR4 memories. So thanks for watching one of my videos once again and I will see you on the next one.